Hey, all right, I'm going to go through this verse. My phone is really screwing up, man. But uh, here we go. Here's the next verse. And look, um, what it said that they're, you're going to be put in prison and uh, taken to prison and put to death. If you're left behind and you, you realize, you finally wake up and realize what happened by being left behind. Like two will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left, right? Two will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, one will be left. When you realize because uh, you're someone in your family who's a spirit-filled, born-again believer warning you and telling you what's happening, you know, and, and you don't accept it, you might not believe in a, a catching away, a rapture of the first fruit harvest and all that, um, you're going to wake up real quick. And, and if you make that stand and refuse to take the, you know, the cure, right, the mark of the beast, if you refuse to take that, they're going to turn you in. You'll be taken to prison and put to death. I mean, that's the way it is. So there's that from that last verse. It'll be your friends and family that do it too because they become, they're so scared they love the things of this world and they don't want to let go of it. You know, you got to wake up, wake up, all that are asleep and coming to the light, all that are dead, because we're in a world here of the walking dead. If you're not born again from above of his spirit, which brings you from a condition of death back to life through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Okay, so understand this. This is Now, this verse is Romans 8, verse 28. I'll read it the way it is in most of our Bibles and then take every word back to its origin by using the lexicons and the strongs, and we're gonna get a much, there's there's some great, great revelation here. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I'll try to go through it quick, you know, but it's 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 beautiful. And there's a succession of an order of events that he's, he's showing me by giving me these certain verses. Look, I'm not worthy, I know that, man. I'm screwed up, <laughs> probably more screwed up than most of you, I'm, I'm sure. But, you know, I know I have no doubt. I have complete faith and trust in him. I'm ready to go home. I don't care what happens or how that happens. I'm, I'm ready. I know he's in complete control. Being released from this physical body, this flesh, is your prison suit, which keeps you trapped and in bondage here to this world. And when we're released from it, we get to go home. But we all have a duty here while we're here. He wants us all to be used by him for his purpose. So understand that. Let's finish this race strong. So this is Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. They did a good job here. This is They did a pretty pretty good job on this one. Uh, it's very close to, the, a lot of detail is here, but uh, there's more details that were left out that they just couldn't grasp. Men couldn't grasp it. And this was written by Paul to the Romans, right? So understand that. Uh, therefore, to see and perceive what, mo what must be done, to experience our condition, to gain knowledge, right? It's knowledge of good and evil, we're deceived. To gain knowledge and to have regard for the one, I believe that's Christ, to cherish and pay attention to, by allowing his self to be seen. God came into the, this world in the likeness of simple flesh. It was not simple. Okay, and we did this to know and become acquainted with him. Become like God, right? You can become like God. Um, but he wants us to take a more in-depth look at this, to know and become acquainted with him by this experience here. We wanted to experience it to become like God. Um, to show ourselves, he said myself, but it's all of us, ourselves. This is Paul speaking, right? To show ourselves, to discern physically, voluntarily, by an earnest but more continued inspection that each and every individual of a whole, of a whole, one were born again of his spirit, uh, whosoever is laboring together in, companion, in a companionship by a resemblance of completeness, by being born again of the spirit, being made complete here by the gift of his Holy Spirit while we're still here, um, to which we are joined from above by a transfer from above, a transfer of his Holy Spirit from above. He gave his life for us by his toil, by his work of travail, on the cross, uh, it's an instrument of torture. When you look up travail, an instrument in the Latin, it's an instrument of torture by three states. What he did on the cross. For a purpose of one mind, the mind of God, to be set at one again unto the end of a good constitution. Of a good constitution. And I've seen that word in multiple verses that I've looked at. A constitution, constitution, good constitution. Look, the constitution was written, it's a good thing based on biblical principles. All men are created equal. We're all equal. No matter what your opinion is, we're allowed to speak out and give it forth. Uh, 
to have certain unalienable rights that are given by the creator himself. It's a good thing. And who's trying to destroy it? Who's trying to rip apart the Constitution? Understand that. Silence us and everything else. Who's doing that? What? You know, think about that one. So, to be of a good Constitution, distinguished and upright and honorable as a benefit, excellent and precious, genuine, sealed by God, made genuine by the gift of his Holy Spirit, and approved as one ought to be uh, by the purity of by conferring, by the conferring, bestowing and granting a gift, by conferring the purity of heart and mind to whosoever that in all their strain from the way, in all their inflections, strain from the way, are supplied the definite article, the Holy Spirit of God himself, to be well pleased and be loved, marking a personal attachment and embracing the judgment, whatever it is, we're at ease, we're at peace here while we're here because we've been born again of his spirit we know he's in complete control no matter what happens by the assent of our own will right as a matter as a matter of principle and duty the two thus stand very much related of of the heart and the mind of one mind christ become one in christ specifically by a kiss which is a mark of tenderness and when you look up like just look up the definition of kiss it's a beautiful thing Right? as a mark of tenderness, um, and it's a sign for reverence when you love someone and reverence, and it also means to become reconciled. So we have to be reconciled back to our Father through the gift of his Holy Spirit, which is only given by Christ. Jesus Christ is only begotten, monogene, one of a kind, his only son. Understand that. To a God or goddess with small g's. So we become reconciled, a god or goddess that is reconciled. And look at Elohim, the definition of H430. The Elohim, I have said you are all gods or goddesses with a small g. You are all gods with a small g. You are all Elohim. That word is Elohim in Psalms 82.6. You are all children of the Most High. But you have fallen like one of the princes in the angels and uh, stars of heaven are the princes of El, princes of God, right? And you will die like a man. Now, we're in a fallen state. But if you reject God, you're of your father of this world, this flesh, who has given reign and rule over this world for a time, Satan, right? You're now his child of your father of this world, Satan, the devil, if you reject God. Okay, so a, a God or goddess that is reconciled back to God the Father through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, things that are due to him. Of judges and magistrates, and that's in that definition of Elohim, a God, God is judge, ju judges, magistrates, likened unto him by the gift of his Holy Spirit with the supreme divinity in all our inflections, straying from the way, and Christ is, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? So we have strayed from the way, um, but we are supplied the definite article to be present and to exist, invited by God to a banquet by the proclamation of the gospel to obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom through Christ, called to the discharge of an office divinely selected by Christ himself and appointed specifically to be a saint embraced by the salvation of God, called among men to receive a title, a true Israelite, because we're, when we're born into this world, we're called a Gentile. Everybody's a Gentile when we're born into this world. We, we worship an idol and we we desired it. We lusted after it. We wanted to gain the knowledge of good and evil. We wanted to become like the Most High God, and we wanted to dwell and dwell this dead thing because you're born into death and condemnation by going into a, this vessel. We've broken the first commandment. Therefore, we've broken them all. So there's that. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, to receive a title incited by his word down in place and time, according to the drip distribution and the setting forth of a proposal to expose to the public of, of oneself's state of their bodies of the dead. They're, we're in a rotten, fallen, dying, Satan has fallen, and we're in a fallen state of a rotten, fallen, dying tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Placed down, okay, to lay aside and serve something. So we lay this, the worries and cares and the things of this world aside, okay, to serve something, to be explained by discourse, set forth to establish an ordained one in an upright and active position. So there's that verse. That's what we're all called to do when we're born again of his spirit, to come together as one family, as a whole, 
of the children of the Most High God, get that title, a true Israelite, a, a prince of El, Israel, princes of El, okay? And uh, give out his word. So, so there's that. There's that. And he's calling us to a banquet. We're invited by God, specifically chosen by him. So, and he's got, a, he's got everything under control. So we accept whatever judgment. Whatever happens, whatever comes, comes. And we're at the point of judgment right now. It's coming. It's coming. And you have to make a firm decision. Right now, you have to make a firm decision. What kingdom do you want to belong to? Do you want to stay here? Or do you want to get, go home and be with your father in heaven? <laughs> the answer should be simple. It should be simple. And if it isn't, then you're still double-minded and you're going to be left behind. And you may turn to him then, but most likely you're going to be betrayed by your own family members and friends for not taking the this and not obeying uh, Satan when he takes over for a very short time. Okay? Um, and, and you most likely will be put to death. That's what it said in the last verse I went over. So there's that one. Alright. God bless. Have a great day. Let's finish this race strong. Fight the good fight, all right? And uh, get this word out there because it's time. It's, 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 it's time to go. It's time to go. All right, God bless. Bye.